What's up guys, d -Dub's Garage here. Unfortunately, we are coming to you on a little bit more of a sad note. Uh, right before I was about to go to my final tattoo appointment, I was just letting my sob warm up because it was a pretty cold day and that's not a bad thing to do. Um, I came out and as you guys saw in the clip before, we had a check engine light on. I can't complain too much only because this thing has been driving beautifully for about, almost seemed like half a year, honestly. I uh, did plenty of trips to Penn State in it, ran like a top, great on the highway. So it's really just one of those things, you own a vehicle, you gotta expect that sometimes it's gonna have some issues, especially if it's a Saab. <laughs> so what's really unfortunate though is the code that we got, and that code is this. The main problem with that is that I have an internal fault with my ECU. That's what we think. Um, if it does end up being this internal fault, like we can see here, as described on the internet, we are getting no pulses sent to the throttle body. I have a couple of different things I'm gonna try before trying to find an ECU, which is gonna be very hard, and I'm gonna show you guys those right now. Now, one thing, guys, that I've already taken the time to do was actually check my battery. Um, sometimes, especially with these late model cars, you can get a whole bunch of different ghost codes, is what I like to call them, from low voltage, uh, without anything actually saying, hey, your battery's low. Uh, so one thing that I checked was basically just standing voltage on the battery. Mine is a little bit low, it's at 12. You wanna see ideally 12.6 volts, so it's a little bit discharged. That could be an issue uh, down the road, so that was one thing I checked, obviously. And then also I checked the charging system. Basically all you do for that is have the car running and hook up your multimeter. It's charging well, so no problems there. So now knowing that the battery is discharged, that's something that we definitely want to knock out. I noticed it a little bit too during the winter, the Saab would kind of struggle to start. Very common issue, I've had that battery in there for probably about two and a half years or so. So I ordered a really nice Optima deep cycle battery that is on its way from Texas. So while I'm waiting for that, we're gonna show you some other things that we can do to actually prevent this code from even happening. Obviously it's a little late for me, but I wanna help you guys out. So check this out. This is a Saab ECU spacer kit. It basically lifts the C ECU up off the engine because GM totally dropped the ball on this one. They mounted the ECU directly to the intake manifold where it can see super high temperatures and the circuit board inside can actually bend and obviously end up with some internal faults. So this kit, I'll obviously put the link in the description. This QR code, it's pretty cool too. That actually sends you straight to Auto Autopsy's video about this because he's a big Saab guy. Um, so definitely check that one out. One more thing before we get started guys. This is a strange thing that I started to notice and it's kind of making me hope that maybe the throttle body is junk on this car. Uh, basically only in hot weather, which kind of adds to my theory a little bit, I guess, um, or warmer weather than we've been experiencing like winter here around Philadelphia. Um, basically, I would run the car, everything was cool. When it cold started, fired right up, drive it around, you know, get, get it hot. Uh, and then, you know, I'd go to pick up my friend and once we got in the car, I'd go to start it again, hot start it, and it would die. Just fall on its face immediately. And I'm, you know, I'm kind of thinking that's odd that I don't have an engine light. And I've been experiencing that symptom for a couple months or so. So what I would do is literally give it gas as if it was carbureted <laughs> once I started it and then everything was cool. It would come back down idle and it was all right. So obviously you guys knowing this is a fuel injected car, that makes no sense. <laughs> So I'm really hoping that maybe that's just sort of some strange issue with the throttle body, but I guess we'll find out. For now, enough talk. Let's get that ECU spaced up out of there because I don't want it anywhere near that engine anymore. Let's do it. So here's everything you guys are gonna need to actually get this job done. And just one other thing guys, I will leave the link in the description for this as well. This is not part of the kit. This is something I had laying around that I used on the Vega. This is starter heat shield. Basically, I'm gonna do a double whammy on this one. I'm gonna space the ECU upward, again, to get some airflow under it and to lower temperatures. 
but also I'm gonna put some heat shielding on the bottom toward the engine side to basically just completely keep any heat off of that. So I'll show you guys that also once we get the ECU out of the car. So we got the ECU out of there. It's sitting here. It's already looking pretty crusty anyway. So we are going to do the extra step right now. I'm going to make sure I take a nice picture of the part number. I heard somewhere that they're all the same, but I just want to picture that just in case. And then we are actually going to put that heat shield on the bottom of the ECU right here just to help even more. So let's go ahead and do that. Just like that, we got a nice protective heat shield on the back there, so I'm feeling good about that. If you guys uh, end up doing this extra step and buying this heat shield off of Summit, uh, just make sure that you have a nice little pocket screwdriver because getting the film off to actually get the adhesive side out is pretty difficult on this. But, just thought I would mention that real quick. Now, let's get to the spacer kit. So guys, just like that, the install is done. I would say it looks pretty sweet. I like that you can still see some of the blue under it. it kind of spruces things up a little bit. Obviously we went double whammy and we put some heat shield on the bottom of the ECU as well. But this is done. Now I'm just waiting on a battery. The throttle body did look a little crusty, a little nasty. So I wouldn't be surprised if we have to do that as well, which would mean basically taking everything apart that I just did, but that's okay. So for now, we're gonna wait on that battery. We're gonna just put that old one up in the garage and uh, we're gonna cross our fingers and pray. So guys, as you can see from that video, it's been a probably about a week of driving the Saab, but within two days, the monitors were set. So. If you learned anything at all from this video, definitely check that battery if you're getting some codes that you're a little scared about. And uh, make sure standing voltage is 12.6. Uh, so that's about it there, guys. I'm really stoked, it's back. It's good to go, feels great. Just detailed it yesterday with my twin and it looks awesome. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully you're keeping your sobs running out there. We'll see you in the next one.